Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. We have already learned about breaks in the previous session. So in this session, we are going to learn about clutches. The lesson contents of this session cover the introduction and types of clutches and also the basic conditions or assumptions of clutches which are uniform wear and uniform pressure. By the end of this lesson, the student should be able to describe the different types of clutches and also able to calculate the actuating force and torque transmitted in clutch system based on uniform wear and uniform pressure conditions. First, let's take a look what is clutch. A clutch is a machine member used to connect a driving shaft to a driven shaft so that the driven shaft may be started or stopped at will without stopping the driving shaft. The use of a clutch is mostly found in automobiles. The figure shows the example of clutch. It consists of driving shaft and connect to the driven shaft. A little consideration will show that in order to change gears or to stop the vehicle, it is required that the driven shaft should stop but the engine should continue to run. It is therefore necessary that the driven shaft should be disengaged from the driving shaft. The engagement and disengagement of the shaft is obtained by means of a clutch which is operated by a lever. Next is comparison between this clutch and this brake. This clutch transmit torque from the input to the output shaft by the frictional force developed between two discs or plates when they are pressed together. While this brake is basically the same device, but one of the shaft is fixed to lower the speed or to stop the other shaft when it is engaged. One of the frictional surfaces of the clutch or brake is typically metal, either cast iron or steel and the other is a frictional material or lining. Two basic conditions or assumptions occur at the interface of friction surface, which are uniform wear and uniform pressure. So the designer must decide which assumption more closely approximates to the particular clutch being analyzed. Basically, the uniform wear assumption gives lower calculated clutch capacity compared to the uniform pressure assumption. Hence, most of the clutch is designed based on uniform wear assumption because it gives conservative results. Under uniform wear condition, the intensity of pressure varies inversely with the distance. P here is the intensity of pressure and R is the radius from the axis of the clutch. So, P times R equal to C where C is a constant. Hence, maximum pressure times the inner radius will be equal to minimum pressure times the outer radius of the disc. This expression is important to determine the maximum and minimum pressure acting on the disc. Next, uniform pressure condition is normally occurs when the friction surface is new or a new clash. But in an old clash, the uniform wear theory is more approximate. During the uniform pressure condition, we can calculate the average pressure on a friction or surface contact by using this formula, where P average equals to total force on friction surface divided by the cross-sectional area of friction surface. Here we have Fa is the actuating force or axial force, capital R is the outer radius, and small r is the inner radius. Next, we move to the types of clutch. Basically, there are various types of clutch, but we are going to learn about two types of clutch only. First is disc clutch, and the second is cone clutch. Both of these clutches are also known as axial friction clutches. The figures here show the example of disc and cone clutches. There are two types of disc clutch, which are single disc or single plate clutch, 
and multiple disk clash. The difference of these two clash is the number of disk used. Single disk clash is also called a single plate clash. It is larger in diameter to give adequate torque capacity. In automotive disk clash, the input disk or flywheel rotates with the crankshaft, while the hub of the clash output disk is spline connected to the transmission shaft. The clash is disengaged by depressing the clash pedal. Two basic conditions as I mentioned just now, uniform wear and uniform pressure. And two important performance analysis that will be looked at in these clashes are the actuating force and the transmitted torque. The torque can be transferred depends on the frictional force developed between the disc, coefficient of friction and the geometry of the clash. The advantage of the disc over the drum clash is the absence of centrifugal effects and efficient heat dissipation surfaces. Next, we move on multiple disc clash. Multiple disc clashes can have the frictional lining on facing sides of a number of alternative driving and driven discs. The disc of multiple discs is thin, about 1.5 mm with a smaller diameter. After the clash is engaged, the discs are clamped tightly together to provide a number of active friction surfaces. Refer to the figure. N is measured from the number of contact between driver and driven disc. Here we have 6 contact surfaces. So N equals to 6. The torque capacity equation developed by a single disc clash is multiplied by N to obtain the torque value. The disc can be designed to operate either in dry or wet with oil. The advantages of using oil are reduced wear, smoother action, and lower operating temperature. Most of multiple disc clutches operate either immersed in oil or in a spray. They are also compact and suitable for high-speed operations in various machinery. Next, we move on uniform wear disc clutch. The clutch is sufficiently rigid. Hence, the wear over the lining is assumed uniform. Then we can calculate the actuating force and the torque capacity by using the equation shown. Pmax is the maximum pressure, small d is the inner diameter, and capital D is the outer diameter of the disc, and F is the coefficient of friction. And then the relationship between Fa and T is shown here. This equation is obtained from the derivation of equation of Fa and T just now. Then the torque capacity for a multiple disc clash is obtained by multiplying number of active surfaces n. Next, we move on uniform pressure disc clash. The clash is relatively flexible, hence the pressure over the lining is assumed uniform. And we can use these equations to find the actuating force and the torque capacity of the clash. We can also use the equation of relationship between Fa and T to get those values. And also, the torque capacity for a multiple disc clash is obtained by multiplying number of active surfaces n. Next, we move on cone clash. Cone clash basically can be considered as a general case of a disc clash having a cone angle of 90 degrees. It provides larger torque than this clutch due to the increased frictional area and waging action of the part. It has only one friction surface or N equals to 1. Cone clutch often used in low speed applications. This is the schematic diagram and dimensions of a cone clutch. There are four important parameters here, inner and outer diameters, width of the cone and cone angle. Alpha is measured using a trigonometry concept, where sine alpha equals to outer d minus inner d over 2w. 
Next to basic condition and assumptions that will be considered in a cone clutches, which are uniform wear and uniform pressure. And two important performance analysis, which are the actuating force and the transmitted torque. These are the formula of actuating force and torque capacity of a cone clutch using uniform wear theory. Here we have P max is the maximum pressure, inner and outer diameters, F is the coefficient of friction, and alpha is the cone angle. These are the formula of actuating force and torque capacity of a cone clutch using uniform pressure theory. We just use all these formulas to find the unknown parameters like Fa, T, P max, or D. Now we are at the end of our session. Let's we recap what we have learned just now. First, we learn about the general introduction of clutch. After that, we learn about a single and multiple disc clutches. We also learn about the cone clutch. Then we learn about uniform wear and uniform pressure conditions of the clutches. From there, we can determine the actuating force and the torque capacity of the clutch. That's all for this session. Thank you.